we want to continue in the same intensity, the same capacity, the same grace, the same speed as the Spirit of God um, has been dealing with us over the weeks and the months that have gone by. And we want to receive our dear apostle, Kelvin Chambliss, to have um, the word of God delivered to us. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, everyone. It is good to be here again uh, to share with you um, on this platform with uh, my dear friend and brother, Mark Ekbeko. Uh, it is an honor um, to share with you. I'm grateful to God for each of you and those of you who come each week. And those of you who are visiting tonight, it's good to have you uh, with us. Um, we are, I wanna see if I can uh, share my screen here. We're in the middle of a conversation here. Uh, some things here, we're looking at hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I wanted to, um, I, I, there's something I wanna share, but I wanna go back over some of the things here we've, uh, we've started with. And um, one of them is the results uh, we were talking about the woman in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter three. Uh, this is kind of closing out what we talked about uh, our last time, dealing with the woman, Song of Solomon, chapter three, where she's going after the one who she says her soul loves. And she was uh, very desperate and she wanted to find this, this person. And so, the results, her desperation produced a refusal to live life another day without him. She refused to be satisfied without him. She said, I must arise now and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I must see him whom my soul loves. I sought him but did not find him. So now desperation sets in. She says, I must arise and go. And as um, Mark was playing the song again, uh, the ordinary just won't do, desperate times call for desperate measures. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So when times are desperate, when things are um, in peril, then we need a desperation that matches that peril. We need a resolve that matches that peril. And so um, the scripture goes on and tells us about how she says, I must arrive and go. When hunger sets in, when hunger sets in, our present location can no longer contain us. When hunger sets in, the status quo just won't do. When hunger sets in, there is another dimension and we change our location. We migrate to a different location. I really believe that God is calling us and wooing us into more intimacy, more closeness with him. Um, that is certainly very strong inside of my heart. And it seems, seems to be the, the main theme that happens um, as uh, Mark and I speak, when we get a chance to speak, we're always talking about the passion of our hearts and what we desire for God to do in our lives. So let's look at a short video revealing a desperate feat of the Ibex to receive the much needed nourishment for their existence and the risk required to acquire it. Now, after we see the video, I may show it twice. It's not very long, but I wanna show it twice perhaps, and I want you to see what is happening here. And um, the first time, I just want you to watch it to see what's going on. The second time, I want you to consider that the, the wall, the rock that is being scaled is process. The salt inside of the rock is God. And the ibex that is climbing would be us, okay? So we're gonna go to this video here.
Well, um, I don't think I'll, I'll show it an, another time, maybe, maybe later, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you saw initially, because this is what I want us to talk about today. What were some of your initial thoughts in seeing what you just saw on that video? I see uh, Pastor uh, Delusma, your hand is up. The mic is open for you. Hello? Go ahead. Unmute your mic. See the hand is up. Hello? Yes. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. This is Pastor Telis Malgeson from Haiti talking to you now. How are you doing? Very well. Good to have you on. Everyone is doing well. Did you have a comment about the video you saw? Hello. Did you see I'm the sorry. Did you did you see the video? Yes. No, I, I can't. You weren't able to see it? No. OK, all right. That's what we were taking comments on the video that we just showed uh, on the um, uh, those that can, can visualize and then those that can see. See, we shared our screen. Uh, so you may not have, um, have that to see right now. But we thank you for being on, and we thank you for uh, sharing in these uh, in these studies with us tonight. So thank you, thank you for okay. being on. All right, You're welcome. welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Sure. Okay. All right. Was there anyone uh, that saw the video and some initial thoughts in what you saw inside of that? I'd like to hear your comments. We want to want to make this more of a dialogue this evening, more than just a monologue. I don't want to to teach because I really have a burden that I'd like to, to share with you once we start to, to get along. Any thoughts, any initial thoughts? Yes. Unika, the mic is open. Thank you. Yes, Calvin, thank you for sharing that interesting video. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just looking from a perspective, like, well, from, based on your topic, right, um, hungering for God, it, it seems that if, what I saw is that, you know, the hunger of this IPAC, this creature was so great that it could risk its own life, right? Um, it, when uh, it could go to what would seem very impossible to climb and it saw the options to reach its goal, even though in, uh, it would seem very much unnatural, right? Um, but those are the two thoughts that just jumped um, up in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it makes me think about how great is my own hunger for God, right? Yeah. So just wanted to share that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Unika. That's, that's right in along the lines that, that I was thinking as well regarding the, uh, the IBEC. And, and it just didn't seem that the danger was that much of a big deal, that the intense hunger, the thirst, and the need was so intense that it, it demanded that something else happen, that even though there was a risk involved, what was needed was more than that risk. And um, I just, when I saw that video, it just, it made me wonder about my own passion for God, not in a, not in a critical way, but in a comparison, a comparison way um, that, you know, the, the desire to be near the Lord, not just for him to answer my prayers or to, um, to give me goodies, or to you know make things well for me, but just the the idea, the concept of 
going after him and wanting to be near him and realize that what he has is what I need for my life, for my existence, to be able to make it. And so that type of intensity, that type of desperation requires a measure that can sometimes be risky, a measure that doesn't seem normal, and, and, and a, um, where onlookers are looking and saying, it doesn't require all of that. And they misdiagnose your hunger, like Eli misdiagnosed Hannah's passion to have a child, a son, and he thought she was drunk. And she says, no, no, I have a request, I have a desire. And that passion was so strong inside of her spirit. She says, I want to birth something and dedicate. I want to dedicate this son to the Lord. I will carry it. I'll go through all of the morning sickness. I'll go through all of the pains. I'll go through all of the things. I will carry this child, but I will give the child away once he is weaned and dedicate him to the Lord. What a noble desire. What a noble desire. What a, a passionate and a heartfelt desire. Because there were two wives involved. One was Penina, who was uh, able to have children. And Hannah was the other wife that was unable to have children uh, for Elkanah, which was their husband. And so he would give her a double portion of finance. Well, after a while, that didn't work for Hannah. She wanted more than just money. She wanted to be able to produce and to become fruitful. And so it, it, it brought her to a place of deep desperation inside of her heart. And so I really appreciate your comments, uh, Unika, because um, this, is, this is where I find myself and this is where many of you may find yourself that um, for myself, as I look at the things that I'm asked to do for God and the things that I participate in, I need to have the strength of God, not just the ability of God. I need to, him to resource me, you know? And so not from a standpoint of requirement, but a standpoint of desire, deep desire, because I wanna be near him. I want to um, fellowship with him. You know, and just like the IBEC, needing to get to a place that is elevated and is risky just for the salt that is needed. And that salt, as we said, in, the, in, in this metaphor, prophetically looking at it, is God who is who we need. But the process is the wall. The process is, is that, that stone, that rock that they scale. But I even saw the mercy of God even inside of leaving little bumps for footholds for the Ibex. Because if it was smooth, they, could know, they would not be able to scale that. But even God in his mercy bought little bubbles or any, you know, a place for them to you know, be able to put their feet, their feet to be able to go up and climb up and to scale it. So even inside of that is God's mercy. And um, so, yeah, very, very good. All right, is there someone else? Anyone else with a comment? Something you see inside of that? Yes, Zarina, the mic is yours. Hello. Thank you. Hello, Zarina. Good to have you on, God bless you. It's good to be here. So I had a thought while you were speaking on Hannah, when you spoke about her desperation. Um, and when Hannah was desperate, she didn't have a gift to give to God. But in her desperation and in her desire to give, God blessed her with something that she could give back. Not just to God, but Samuel was a blessing to everyone around him. So my thought is that if you're desperate enough and you're willing enough and you, you want to enough, but you don't have the means, God is gonna open up a way to give you those means so that you can give back. Um, 
in your desperation to see his presence, um, his will and his purpose on the earth um, and your need to do something that is beyond yourself, beyond your own limitations, that God is going to open up that door so that you have that you can give now. And my other thought about the Ibeck was that I saw another younger Ibeck following the older one. And uh, I'm thinking that there's always a forerunner, someone who's brave enough, probably even insane enough to say, I'm so desperate, I'm going to go there to that place because I'm so desperate there must be something more than what is there already that I'm going to go beyond the traditions and the teachings and the things I've already known because it's not taking me any further. And then they become a forerunner and other people could see that there's just something more that this person is doing and that they believe now that because somebody else has cut a road for them, that they can now have that courage to follow in that pathway. So those are my two thoughts. Very, very good thoughts. Very good thoughts. And, and um, I don't know, I just want to make sure I heard your word correctly. Did you say insane enough? Insane enough. Insane <laughs> enough. I think so. Is it, is it thinking I'm looking at that wall and I'm thinking, this creature is insane, you know, <laughs> but it, yeah. it, it takes a level of, I'm so tired of this, that I'm going to just go that far. I'm just going to go where nobody's gone before. And people might look at you and think you are insane. But, you know, they say, um, everybody thought Noah was a fool until it started to rain, you know, <laughs> so something like that. Oh my goodness. I tell you, you you were you were speaking my heart's cry. I mean, coming to the end, when we come to the end of ourselves, when we when we say this is working for me no more. When we say I have had it with this. And the insanity comes in when we exchange our limited thinking for the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So yes, so the insanity going out of my mind, that's one part of it, but what mind do we take up after that? And that's the mind that we want. We want the mind of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I tell you. And so it is with this thought and this line of reasoning that I want to have this conversation. And I appreciate uh, Unique and Zarina, you all joining in. And um, those of you all that have comments about this, um, the, the theme tonight is hunger and thirst after righteousness. We just showed a video about the IBEX scaling of a rock that had salt that is what the scientists say is really needed for their bones and for their existence, all of, all of those things that they essentially need for their life, but they had to risk scaling this wall in order to find it. And I, my prayer is, Lord, give us this hunger, this, this thirst for you that refuses to be satisfied, refuses to be satisfied. There can be so many things in this world we can settle for so many things that we can resign to and just say, oh, it's okay. It's no big deal. But God is rooting for us to come closer to him, to go after him, to step out of the crowd, to go further, to push the limits, to push the boundaries, to go outside of our comfort zone into a place just to meet him, just to meet him, you know? And um, so, so this is, this is where, where I am. And I wanted to share this uh, lesson there. I didn't want to teach. I wanted it to happen just like it's happening now where I'm hearing from you and we are talking about this. We are getting the picture. We're starting to see, we're starting to understand and we're starting to um, even hear our own hearts 
in our brother and sister, you know, um, some of our own passion for God. And so I just really believe that this is a season that we're in. If we're going to be effective in the ecclesia, if we're going to be effective in the earth, there must be a people who don't care about themselves, but only care about seeing God for the benefit of others to be able to be a conduit of life, a conduit of strength, a conduit, an example that inspires others to want to, to come into this, uh, this, great, this great kingdom of God. And so this, is, uh, this, this really, really strikes me uh, deeply. So is there anyone else that had some initial thoughts on what we were sharing here? about hunger and thirst and maybe even your own desire in this season, your own heart's desire. Share that with, the, with us, if you will. That would, that would be good. It'd be great to hear, hear from you. All right. Okay. All right. This is what we'll do. We will, uh, let's see here. I want to go back to I'm gonna go, let me get out of here. Uh, I'm gonna go back to share my screen. Uh, where's my screen share? Okay, that's not it. That's not what I'm looking for. Let me see, stop share, define, okay. Hey, can you can can you all see my screen? Am I, I'm not it's not pulling up. I don't know what's happening here. Hello, Kevin. Yes, I, Mark. Okay. No, so I I can only see your browser, not um your PowerPoint. Okay. You need to. The browser on the desktop so okay can you see my my not yet let me see uh let's try screen share now and there we go okay there we go can you see it now yes okay very well very well okay now so here here we go so the question over the video what do you see some of y'all have answered that. But here's the scenario. If the rock represented process and the salt on the wall or the rock represented God and we represent the Ibex, how close do we come to the reality of this video in our pursuit for God? How could danger or risk prevent one from God when, he, when he's the source of life? How could danger or risk prevent one from, from God, who is the source of life? Sometimes people will look at the risk instead of him, and they'll go back and they'll retreat. So this video is not to judge or minimize our place in God as it stands. Just an exam to ask, what is my true and practical level of pursuit for him? Is he first in all things? Colossians 1.18 asks the question um, about, or makes a statement that he might have first place, preeminence is the King James word, that he might have first place in all things. In considering these questions, they lead to more questions to ask. For example, could one give God more of their time, more of their heart, more of their will, okay? What prevents one from doing it now? You know, I look at um, how distractions come up. Things that, that and, and many times they can be good, but they cause us to, to veer off from the things of God. We, we, we start to look like when Peter came out of the boat and he asked the Lord, he said, can I come to you? Jesus said, yes, come. So when he said, come, Peter had actually something to walk on. That's what he walked. He walked on the invitation Jesus extended to him in faith. All right? So when Jesus said, come, Peter, 
He just stepped out and that is what he was able to, to walk on. That's what substantiated his pursuit of Christ. But then the landscape changed. Changing landscapes is, is something that we always have to be aware of. The landscape changed from everything was fine and then the wind started picking up and the waves started beating against the boat and just started becoming more perilous, more dangerous. And Peter shifted his gaze from Jesus and on to the circumstances. It's so easy to do. We don't even have to think about it. We don't even have to make arrangements for it. it, it many times it is uh, reflexive. It's reflexive, you know, to do that. So these are things that I, I really want to think about. And I do think about, I want to share them with you. What, yeah, what are some of these things? What, how do we reach the end of ourselves? How do we keep things from distracting us? How does the passion come alive and come, come forth? And was there someone that had a question or, or a statement? Was there someone there? Someone's mic is open. Okay, continue on. How should one deal or handle their deficiencies. We all have them in some form or fashion. Not necessarily sins, but just things that we think about that we say, well, I, I don't think I can do that, you know, or, um, you know, I don't have any practice with that. You know, can I really do this kind of things? And so when we look at our deficiencies, how do we see them? Do we see them as keeping us out? Do we see them as limiting? Or do we see them as opportunities for God to take our weakness and make it strong? These are questions I'm just asking. And here's a question I ask myself. Is God the essence of my life or just an important part of it? Is God the essence of my life or just, or just a part of it? Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's stop here and just, just talk about, about this so far. Any, any thoughts? I want to have a conversation with you about this, about, about pursuit, about, you know, coming after the heart of God with passion, reaching the end of ourselves. What would that look like for you? What would that look like for me? One of the things I can say that um, that comes to me is to abandon my way, even if it's worked, even if it was successful, to abandon my way, to take on what God is calling me to, what is a, what what He's making available for me. Because I, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of how when the Lord speaks, seasons change, and he will no longer be found in that place. In Jeremiah 18, the Lord says, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my word. Well, wasn't Jeremiah hearing God? He was hearing him in his present location, but the Lord was letting him know, if you want to continue to hear me speak, you must migrate to the location I'm directing you to. Even though he was hearing him right there. So Jeremiah, in order to find God again, he must, must had to leave his present location to go and to meet God where the instruction was. That's where you will find me, at the potter's house. Because what you will find there, what he, Jeremiah found there, was not just an audible message but a visible message that had to become indelible inside of his heart as he was to communicate it accurately to Israel about God's desire to mold, shape, and to morph them, Israel, into a better, more serviceable corporate national vessel for him. Changing locations, hearing God in the one location, but then migrating to the place where we would hear God speak a more current and accurate 
or a present truth word, as it says in Second Peter 1, 18, I believe. It talks about the, the present truth. Any thoughts on this? Any comments on this so far? I don't want this to be a teaching presentation because my heart is hungry today. It's, it's hungry today. And I, I really want to, to get into a season of prayer toward the close of, uh, of this. I, my heart really, I want to talk to the Lord. I want to hear him. I want to hear him through you. I want to hear him um, in this conversation. I want to be able to um, hear clues of where to find him and what to do in this season. I'm really hungry, you all. I'm really hungry today. So any, any thoughts? Any thoughts on, on this? How do we reach the end of ourselves? How, when you have everything you need, how does it come to be that we forsake the comfort, the conveniences, to really get desperate for God as though our needs aren't met or as though, you know, Things aren't good. How do we turn that on? How does, how does that happen? Is it a result of sight? Is it a result, is it a result of deficiency? Is it a result of reaching the end of ourselves? Mark. Your mic is yes. open, Mark, I believe. Yes. Yes, the mic is yes. yours, Mark. Yes, Kevin. My connection is acting up and I pray. I'm able to, to get through this. Um, how do we sustain this passion for him? Um, you know my story already. Kelvin knows um, what happened to me on Monday. I think he was one of the foremost persons I told. And I just want to share um, an ongoing conversation about that. When I speak with friends, uh, very close pals, one of the things that was very significant was this, that um, right now, if you come to my room, I have some very nice shoes there that I've never worn before. Gilda brought me some very nice shirts and clothes I've never worn before. They are hanging in them. And when I was involved in this accident, um, Immediately, I didn't think about all of these. But one of the striking thing was that when I got to the hospital, I was all alone. I wasn't lonely, but I was all alone. My wife wasn't there. Um, none of my friends were there. I didn't know anybody. With the exception of the police, the team of three police uh, officers that took me to the hospital. And it was the... The police officer, one of the police officers, I think he was the lead on the team who even completed the hospital forms for me so I could be treated. He, in fact, he even signed because my right thumb was swollen and I, there was an injury on it. I couldn't hold a pen to, and I was in pain. I sat there. And for one moment, I'm like, so is that the way everything ends? Your shoes don't matter. Your money don't matter. Even sometimes the friends that you have, they don't matter. So as you speak, Kelvin, the scenario that comes to mind is this uh, message by the Lord Jesus Christ to the church of Laodicea where he says that you claim you are rich, but you are naked. You speak to yourself as men who see and who can see and continue to see, but you are blind, less extended. You are like men who declare yourself to have voices in the earth, but you are actually harsh, you have no voice. You go not beyond spitting into the air around you. So I personally, in that process, I, I, in all of the pain in my hip, in my right rib and all of that, 
I kind of saw this whole vacuity, this emptiness, how we can hang on anything we call our accolade, we underscore, underscores our bottom line, who we are, how powerful we could be. But there is a place where you realize that even the clothes that you are wearing in that moment don't matter anymore. Because when I thought about the whole scenario and the death that I could have experienced, which I was snatched out of, I asked myself, so it could have just been the last day. And if that was the last day, that shoe in the room, that even Gilda does not know that particular shoe is there or those shoes are there, nobody would have worn them. They'll be given to people. So the center of life is not what we have. It's not even the ministry we have. Sometimes God calls us and we, in this sometimes we tend to forget about the one who have called us and whom we should focus on and we start pursuing and chasing his gift. Kelvin, please, you started off by quoting the Shulamite woman and says that, in saying that the only thing that satisfy her is Christ. So there is a need that we enter into maturity to recognize that nothing matters. He's all that matters. There's a need that we consciously live in that place of consistent hunger, passion, searching, pursuing. There's a need that we remain in that place where we are constantly hungry and searching. So those are some of the comments I want to make for now. Kevin, thank you. Mark, thank you. And I'm so glad that your, your connection stayed as you were speaking. It, uh, you did not falter. And I'm so grateful to be able to capture what you share. Um, really puts things in perspective about the shoes, the clothes that were left, who would it, you know, and this is what was said to the rich man. Um, now to whom will these things be? Your soul is required of you this night. Now to whom will these things be? Where will these things go? All of your plans, all of those kind of things. What matters in this moment? And the only thing that matters is who you know and who knows you. And that's God. That's the Lord. And um yeah, that, that, that's really, that really puts it in perspective, Mark. It really does, uh, really puts it in perspective. Thank you. Talk about sustaining that hunger, sustaining. Uh, and then uh, let me just share some of the notes from uh, our conversation we had, because this was uh, deeply impacted. And I really didn't want to broach it in, in, in this conversation until we had more time to hash these things out. But there were some thoughts that I, I wrote down from our conversation. Uh, and uh, Mark had mentioned the power of self-knowledge. The power of self-knowledge. Now, I don't know to what extent, what, what door he went through. Uh, when he was saying the power of self-knowledge. But what came to me and what comes to me in this moment is the idea of being true to who I am. What's working? What's not? What's truthful and sincere within me? Right? What am I? Am, am, is this is this a role, or is this real? Are we fulfilling a role? Or are we fulfilling what is real? What's working? What is it? What can I? What can I truly say matters? The Bible says um, in First Corinthians eleven. Let a man examine himself at the Lord's table. First Corinthians 11, around 23 and onward. It talks about let a man examine himself. 
Matthew 7 says, judge yourself so that you will not be judged with the world. Judge yourself. So the power of self-knowledge. Mark, was your mark, uh, was your mic open? Did you want to make a comment here? Okay. All right. Examining, examining myself. Looking at, uh, I'll give you an example. I've been having some trouble with my computer and it has to do with a software problem. Um, one of the ways that I want to get on my, my, um, my browser is Safari. It leads me to my search engine and I was getting an error message on my, on my computer. It wouldn't allow me to go to my search engine. So I called the manufacturer and we started doing some troubleshooting, troubleshooting. This was, this was, you know, so it started off, I've dealt with about maybe three technicians and each one of them had competence and understanding at particular levels of systems and troubleshooting. So the first person who I was referred to took me through all of the steps that she knew. She gave me to someone else. She took me through the steps that she knew. And now they, this gentleman has taken over. He does a whole other, another steps that these other two uh, ladies who were very helpful did not take me through. And so I begin to think about troubleshooting in my life. Things that are not working, do I ignore them or do we go on and pursue and, and look to find out why? This was the reason for the prophets in the Old Testament. This is the reason for the prophets in the Old Testament. They would call to, the God, to God's people and say, return to me, return to me. You have left me, you've drifted. Your love for me isn't as, as fervent as it was, your desire for me. You, have, you long for other things now. And so the prophets would call God's people back to him because to them, it really didn't dawn on them that they had drifted. And that's one thing about drifting. Drifting is gradual. You don't even know it's happening. It's so subtle. It's not abrupt. And if we mix drifting with a cavalier attitude, if we mix drifting with, oh, it's okay. When we, when we think about deferring and passing it on and you know, not worrying about it. These things can grow over time. Um, Samson, a great example of one who had strength in the Bible, a great uh, example of one who was strong, had a covenant vow in his life, but he had a weakness. Samson had a weakness. And he was pursuing you know, a woman that he wanted to marry that was not good for him. And he sent his parents to go down and to get her. With all of Samson's physical strength, his vulnerability caused him to be in a position to where he lost his strength. It was compromised. But when we see the redemption of God, toward the end, he repented and he asked God, he said, Lord, do it again. And this is where I believe that God wants us to come to, that he can do it again to return the joy of the Lord, the fervency, the passion, you know, um, the love that a, a perilous stone to scale doesn't move us. The danger doesn't touch us because to be with him means that we get our life back anyway. And to be away from him is to be walking dead. 
Any thoughts? Any thoughts on, on this so far? I have more slides and stuff, but I don't want to. I, I'm, I'm going a kind of a different way today, but I want to uh, tonight. I wanted to really, really kind of look at this. I'm, I'm listening for God myself as we're having this conversation, examining ourselves, examining our hearts, the power of self knowledge. Any thoughts on these things? In Exodus, I think it's chapter three, Moses saw a burning bush. The bush was burning, but it did not consume and it got its attention. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this bush and why it is not being consumed. I believe that this is where God wants to bring many of his people to a place where we turn aside, where we turn aside and we look, where he catches our attention, he catches our gaze, and, and he speaks out of that burning bush to us. Revelations of what he desires, truths and, and sight and understanding and wisdom comes out of that bush, but we have to commit to that site. We have to hunger for that site. All right. So recognizing the burning bushes in our lives, being willing to turn aside to see. Being willing to turn aside to see. All right. Anybody? Any questions or comments on on uh, on this? Anything you're hearing? Anything you you're willing to share? Regarding this, yes, yes, Serena, the mic is open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so I'm just thinking again about you know these um, times I was speaking of and how they're kind of coming to life in my life, even as I learn and hear all of this new information. And I would have told you all last week that I got promoted and I'm going out to work on Monday and um, I'm really happy about where I'm going to be going. It's kind of like a dream come true. But I was um, messaged by my executive last night and she asked me a favor if I would be willing to sit somewhere else to do another job function. And uh, since, since interviewing for the job and I've been asking God God bless me with this job because um, I know I can make a difference where I work and uh, I got the job and I'm happy about that and just on hearing her ask me do you want to do this particular job which I was doing before um, it's a specific job that apparently not a lot of people can do but not doing the job affects a lot of people in our nation because as I told you all, I work for the National Insurance System where we process benefits. And this benefit is persons retirement pensions where they don't meet the criteria for pension, they're gonna meet the criteria to get a huge lump sum. So nobody's willing to do the work and it's been piling up there for months. And I said yes, very willingly, putting aside the job that I want for a job that I felt that God was calling me to be the answer to other people's prayers. Um, because some of these claims have been sitting there for years. And these are people who should be getting some sort of financial support that because our system lacks in capacity, um, nobody's doing it. And I'm sure these people are out there praying that someone would just give them their monies. And you know, sometimes you're saying yes is the answer to somebody else's prayers. And so while God met my need, you know, I'm very happy about God meeting my need. I want to know 
you know what, what do you want me to do even since i've got this job since i've heard that i've got the job i'm asking god when i go out to work what do you want me to do i didn't just get this job you know because i wanted a promotion i know you see my heart and i know there's something more and i'm willing to be insane <laughs> and to do something that other people may look at me and say this girl is insane but mm. i'm saying yes because i want to meet the needs of somebody out there who might be praying who might be on the bread line who may not be able to pay their bills if i don't go out there on monday and do this task uh so i just want to just share that with you in terms of just not just your needs being met and it's not just about you and yours but even in your needs being met to be so willing to do something different but something that god would smile on you for because somebody is out there waiting for you to say that yes so that's wow. my share for now <laughs> that's beautiful that is beautiful oh boy and and you know and i really believe Zarina, that that was one of the reasons why God gave you that job because he knew your heart in it. And um, I've thought about Isaiah after the Lord calibrated his sight and he saw the Lord sitting on the throne, you know, so his eyes were open. But then after that, his ears were open to a conversation that they were asking, who shall we send? Who will go for us? And then Isaiah was able to say without shame and without reservation, here am I, send me. And, and it's with that same heart, it would appear that that is what, you know, is happening with you to be able to be selfless enough to be able to think on others who are caught, you know, and not don't have, you know, the resources that they need it's it, it is so many things involved in that it, it really is it's, I, I see joseph in it i see isaiah in it there's just so many things you know what a heart for god what a what a very heart for, yeah yeah i agree you make a beautiful beautiful so serena thank you for sharing that and and that encouragement i mean just hearing you say that was encouraging it was enlightening um you know it's very hard to you know not be inspired and say lord i want that i want to i want to take my eyes off of myself and i want to be to think on others that's the heart of christ in a very real way even in the marketplace that's the heart of christ it really is so thank you sister so much for that really appreciate that thank you for sharing that good to have you back mark good to have you back yeah we are talking about uh about these things that we shared, uh, part of my my hunger uh, today. Uh, yes, whoever seeks his life will uh, lose it. But whoever gives it up will find it again. That's what Jesus said. Very true. Very true. So we were talking uh, about the burning bushes, right, and how Moses committed to turn aside to see i want to see how he opened his heart he he got interested enough to see i will turn aside to see what is happening inside of this burning bush god wants to speak to us through things that are very very um not typical not ordinary you know um just like this assignment, Zarina, that, that you have. I just really believe that there's going to be just more things that will come up as a result of you being there. I mean, the grace uh, from your life that will be there, the, the people who will be helped as a result of being there, just the number of things why God has you stationed there. And it's the same with, with, with many of us in ministries and in the marketplace, you know, that we bring a grace that we are an answer to someone's prayer. You know, we're an answer to someone's prayer. Someone was crying out, come to Macedonia to help us. There's a plea and a call, being able to hear that call. That's, oh boy, that stirs me up. Whew. Oh Lord, to be able to hear the cry of God's people. 
Who will answer? Yeah, someone has to answer that. Someone has to answer. Someone with a heart, not someone that just sees it as a job, but someone that sees it as, as an agent for the Lord, being a conduit of his heart to touch others. What a beautiful thing. What a noble, what a noble thing. All right, beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. So grateful, so grateful, so honored to be here. So honored to be here. So this is this is what what we're saying. We we are we've taught about hunger. We've used examples about hunger, you know, and uh, I, you know, like I said, I have notes, but I wanted this to be more interactive because, you know, I have a need too. I have a need too. Mind me, I have a hunger for the Lord. I want more of him. I'm not, God has been good to us, me and Brenda. I'm grateful to him, but I want more. The more of him you take, the more of him you want. The more of him you receive, the more of him you want. Because the scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And once you taste of his goodness, there's more. It's like, I, I, you know, I want more of him. I want more of him. So this is where I am today. And uh, and that's why I'm sharing in this way, kind of slowing it down, you know, not going so much for the, uh, the slides, which is good. I have them prepared, but more important, I wanted to communicate a passion, a need, a desire, like that ape, that Ibex that was, would scale that rock to get what is needed. And that's what I want from God. That's what I want from God. I really want to, uh, I want to pray this evening. I really do. I want to pray. There are conditions and needs and circumstances for so many. Um, like Zarina was saying, you know, you, you hear the, this cry and everybody doesn't hear it. Everybody doesn't hear it. You know, God has given ears to, to certain ones that are connected to his heart that hears the cries. Here's the cries of what's going on. I want to be able to answer some of those cries by God's help, to be an answer to prayer, to be an answer to prayer. So I want to pray this evening. I want to pray for the circumstances that are happening in the various nations, uh, not just our own lives and our own challenges, but um, you know what is happening in the earth overall. You know there are a lot of things that are are happening with people I know in our country, here in other countries, there's just a number of things that are happening. And God is looking for people, still listening for people who are called by his name, who will humble themselves and pray, that will seek his face, turn from their wicked ways. Then he'll hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal our land. Our land needs healing. We were in a meeting uh, yesterday uh, regarding, you know, the U.S., and we had... Um, we're believing God to touch here in the U.S., but how we had others from other countries. And this is how the problem is going to get fixed. We, can, we can't just, um, you know, just have people like from America to heal America's situation. We need the nation. God is a God of nations. And, and, you know, we need prayers. We have brothers and sisters from all over. We have people that have a heart for all kinds of countries, right? Haiti and, and uh, places in Africa, all of these places, right? That, that, you know, it doesn't make any difference what nation you're a part of, but we can touch God with a pure heart and cry out to him and say, Lord, heal the world, heal the nation, not just my nation where I live. There are others, you have people in other nations that are crying out to you. Yeah, so, so yes, I, I really want to pray tonight. So if there are any uh, requests, you just put them in the uh, chat. Some of y'all would like to help us to pray uh, tonight. I would, that would be, that would be good as well to have a collaborative prayer, whatever uh, comes to your heart. But uh, I want to pray this evening for the hunger and the thirst. If it's not present, that it will come upon us, that the um, the desire for the Lord would um, 
will just be so strong that it, sometimes it'll wake us up in the middle of the night to cry out for, for people, the, the people of God, the voiceless that don't have a voice, you know, that we would pray and reach out to be able to hear that cry, be able to hear that cry. All right. Uh, any requests you want to put in the uh, in the chat? That would be great. That would be great. Any prayers? Uh, thank God for keeping Mark through his accident on Monday. Uh, you know, when he was just sharing those things. And again, there's still more that can come from that, I know, as he continues to think about God's goodness and uh, uh, the the grief that was spared, it just would have, oh my goodness. Thank God, you know, thank God for keeping us. For keeping each of us through many dangers, seen and unseen, as some of the elders, elder seniors used to say in our church, the Lord would keep us from danger seen and unseen. Keeping us, yes. All right. Someone have their mic open? Mark. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just connecting with you. So please just go ahead. Okay. Just... All right then. All right. Well, I just, I want to pray. I just want to pray now. Father, we just come before you now. Hearts open, full, wanting to know your desire. What is your desire, Lord? What, what will please you? What are you requesting? What are you calling for us to do? Make us sensitive in our hearing. Give us the, the zeal and the alacrity to respond to you with passion, with joy, to serve in love, to serve in patience, to serve in kindness, that you would be seen in our service, that we would not be fleshly in our approaches, that we would be patient, that we would be thoughtful and mindful, Lord, help in areas where we are vulnerable and we are weak. Help us in those areas where we are deficient. You come to us to heal us. You come to us to strengthen us. Help us to reach up and take hold of that help. Help us to reach up and take hold and lay hold of that eternal life that you are sharing with us. Thank you today for your precious people of God. Thank you today for my brothers and sisters and those that gather around this call and those that are listening to the playback. Look upon them today. You know their needs as they're listening to this time, this word, as they're listening, as they're hearing. Let their hearts connect to this moment we are experiencing now. And we speak and declare life all over them. We speak and declare strength upon their lives now. Lord, let them come to the end of themselves and say, hey, this isn't working anymore. I've got to find the salt on the rock. If it means me climbing, if it means me jeopardizing and risking what I have, even, even friendships, even relationships, I'm going to find God. I'm going to find the salt. I'm going to find life in the things that are needed. Father, I thank you for the spirit of God that's on this call and, and the love of God that reaches out to these who are on. Father, thank you for the testimonies that have come through over the past weeks of your goodness, of your mercy, of your kindness. Lord, thank you for bringing us through sickness and bringing us through difficulty and hardship and trial tests. Thank you for bringing us through. Lord, we see your hand through it all. Thank you for being caring and kind, the loving Father that is there. You said in your word, you would never leave or forsake us. Never, never. That is something we can hold on to. That is something we can put our confidence and our faith in. The fact that you told us you would never leave nor forsake us. Thank you for that promise. Help us to live in it. Help us to walk in it. Help us in the name of Jesus to embrace it, to walk in the authority that you've given to us, to walk in the spirit of might and of revelation, of power. Father, we would come before you 
stand in this earth is strong. Stand in this earth as your representative. And Father, we would have the grace, have the grace that operates, oh God, with the heart that you do, the love that you do, with the care that you have. Even the care that you extended to us, the kindness you extended to us. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem tonight, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Tell her her warfare has ended. Her warfare has ended. That the struggle does not have to be. That as we lay hands in your hands, we put our hands in your hands. And Father, that you are a present help in trouble. Thank you, Lord. We receive your comfort tonight. We receive, we receive your word. We receive your strength. Send your hand of healing out and touch. Send your word of life. Send your word of power. Let it go out and not return to your word. God, heal and deliver and set free. Strengthen the body of your people. Thank you, Father, for driving out weakness. Thank you for driving out inaccuracies. Thank you for bringing alignment to bodies and minds in the name of Jesus. Your word declares you are the Lord, our God, that heals us. Lord, and that's perpetual. You're not just a one-time healer. You are a perpetual healer. You're a comprehensive healer. You're the Lord that heals us from our pain, from our suffering, from our difficulty, from our hardship. You are the God that, speaks, that heals us. You stand by us and you keep us. We thank you so much. We worship and honor you for all that you do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. Meet us at the point of our need, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Meet us at the point of our need. We're crying out to you. We're crying out to you. No other help we know. We have no plan B. We have no other option. You are our source and the strength of our lives. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. To Selma wants to pray, but he wants to pray in Creole. I was telling him he should manage the, the English. I don't know if Unica understands Creole, but Unica is also having challenges with her connection right now. So Pastor Tosoma, if you can just manage the English, just a short one, the short prayer. Since you're, you, you feel your English is inadequate, just go ahead and say the short, Short prayer you can say in English, and I believe that will do so much. So go ahead. He says, another time, I'm in English school. I can't talk much yet. I just can write. Beautiful. You can still write. I mean, it's fine. You can still write. Wow. Father, we need you. Yes, Stop this. Yes, Stir this fire. Let the embers burn in us. Let a new hunger. Let opportunity be best in us. Let a new quest, a new passion. That is given only by heaven. Yes. 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 Like mm -hmm. men dig and search for diamond. Like a baby will need the mother. Like a husband needs the bride. So stir our hearts that our hearts will follow. Yes. The Bible says that I've got to make up my mind. Mm -hmm. I've got to serve the Lord. No matter what, whatever comes my way, I won't turn to the left nor to the right. No distractions of any kind. I'm going to serve the Lord. Father, we pray for that inner fortitude. 
I pray for that intuitive capacity to know and have revelation of your vastness, mm -hmm. of the possibilities that lies with God, yes. of the God kind of faith, the God kind of doing. Lord, we pray that you begin to imbue us with this wisdom that makes us to live eternal. Mm. Imbue us, imbue us with this wisdom that makes our walk here to echo in eternal places. To cause every single action of ours to sound in the corridors of heaven. Lord, that our life here mm. will have eternal ramifications. Mm. Give us the wisdom to live that kind of life. That we will walk through this earth like every other person, but give us that capacity to live that extraordinary existence. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, anything, the noise that binds us, the noise that limits us, the noise that continues to hold us back, that setback, that tripping over, remove it. Lord, we know somebody ever said in history that unexamined life is not worth living. And so we saw Moses examining the burning bush that he had to turn aside to look. Father, each and every one of us here have many bushes experiences. Some of them are tough challenges, things that we can't wrap our heads around. Some of them are financial challenges, health problems. Our son, our daughter, who is not acting correctly, the hope and aspiration and desires that we have for our children, that we are never seeing them walking in these realities. Brothers and sisters of ours connected to us, whom we desire that they will come to know the Lord. Some of them have become a burden. Father, we pray that you give us eyes to see and begin to examine those burning bushes so that we can hear you clearly. Lord, touch us so that we can see clearly. Lord, touch us so that we can sense. Lord, touch us so that we can feel and perceive. Lord, touch us so that we can hear clearly. Lord, we, come in, we came into this conversation knowing that there is nothing that matters that we need a sustained hunger, a sustained passion for you. Yeah. That you want to be the center of activity. Yeah. That every single decision that we make has to revolve around what is the revelation of Christ in this. That every single step that we take, that step must have ramifications that touch us on Christ or must be informed by the revelation of Christ. Father, cause us to live in that place. We pray that Lord, this unique ability of who you are will be upon us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. I feel strengthened tonight. I do. I feel strengthened. I believe that, that the seed that I needed has fallen tonight inside of my heart. And the, the desire and the place in God I'm seeking will be attained because my heart says yes to him, says yes to him. I thank God for each of you, my brothers and sisters. I thank God for you. What an honor it is to, to be here in this place, standing with my dear brother, and, um, and just being in this space, God has provided. I'm so grateful, so grateful that we can share this, these moments with people with like hearts, and like, like spirit and like manner, desire to just want God to have his, his first place in our lives, first consideration that he would be the pursuit of our dreams and our aspirations. He would be the center of them. And we would find him in this place. So grateful. 
so grateful. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank him enough. So good to have each of you all on. Mm -hmm. Unika, we're praying for you, as Mark mentioned. We're praying. We're praying with you. We know you're praying too. You and Sharbert, and we believe in God for you all to uh, to get to the the root of this, and that your health will be restored. Uh, thank God for your stand and your faith fight. Thank God for your standing and your faith fight. Faith is a fight, and it's a good fight, and we're going to win it. And we thank God for you, Pastor. Thank you for being on and sharing with us this evening. We really appreciate it, and. Serena, thank you for your contributions and testimony. And Theo, we didn't hear from you tonight, but it's just good to see you, man. Good to see you. Always, always good to see you. And uh, and of course, my dear brother Mark, what a blessing. What a blessing it is to be here. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is good. This is really good. It's good for us to be here. Mark? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not much. All I will say is thank you all. And we're going to do well to have this uh, recording uploaded. Um, for, 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 for some funny reason, internet connection has been terrible for some months now. You, you saw uh, Albert online and then suddenly he trips off and he's gone. He tries to come back and all of that. Um, but so good we will be sharing this on youtube as usual if you go to youtube mark Agbeko, you will find the previous recordings and um, this one too will be there then if you're on the podcast as well we're going to put out the audio uh, file as well on, on the podcast we've been we've been putting previous recordings there already and we will continue to to do that. So God bless you. God bless you. Let me read this. Unica, we share your faith. We share our faith with you and declare a complete turnaround of your situation. Yes, turnaround of your situation. God watch over you and bring you through. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's from Zorina. Amen. So God bless you, friends. It's a good one. It's a good night. It's not lengthy, it's very interactive. We want to go back to it when it's uploaded. So do have a good evening, a good afternoon, and a good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good, good night. night. Yes, good night, um, everyone. Thanks, Calvin. Thank you, Yudeka. Yeah. Good night. Mm -hmm. good night. Okay, so bye-bye for now. Bye.